As for the other half of the equation of Ohio State and Michigan meeting in the title game, it's just Ohio State can beat Georgia. Like they got dis- they got beat up by Michigan. But just in a vacuum, this is a very good team. Like they only lost the one game and they lost to a team that didn't lose to anybody. But I just don't it's weird after seeing what happened to them against Michigan last year and what happened to them against Michigan this year, it's hard for me to look at that team and the way it plays and put it up against Georgia and think that it's going to win that game. It's right. just because, because I mean, obviously I'm coming at this just from the emotions from the rivalry side of this, because the one thing that's always been placed into these kind of situations is that oftentimes I've heard from fans. You don't want it because the pain of the loss within the context of that rivalry would maybe be less than the joy of the win or the anxiety going into it almost wouldn't be worth it because if Ohio State or Michigan beats the other in a national championship game on the field in the college football playoff, that thing is going to resonate for generations. It's like North Carolina Duke in the Final Four. And the curse continues. Mm-hmm. North Carolina basketball, three-game losing streak. North Carolina football, three-game losing streak. Chip Patterson, 0-18, two weeks in the locks. <laughs> but, like, I just – Ohio State's offense <clears throat> is a beautiful thing. But the thing is with C.J. Stroud, who I think is a great quarterback and who will be one of the first quarterbacks taken in the NFL draft, like, every single quarterback struggles when under pressure. That's kind of the whole point of putting pressure on them. It's a lot easier to throw a football when nobody's in your face and you're able to step in, take your time, and put it where you want. But Stroud, I do feel, struggles with pressure in front of him a lot more than some of the other top guys. And with that Ohio State offensive line, which I don't think is particularly exceptional. I think it's got some good players, but I don't think as a unit it has been anything that really kind of impresses me to the same level that a Georgia line does or a Michigan line does or a few other lines in the country. Going up against that Georgia front, I just don't see C.J. Stroud having many clean pockets to work with. And when he gets flustered is when he makes some bad decisions And I just can kind of see that snowballing on him in this game against that defense, against a team that has, you know, it has NFL talent at corner. It has the kind of talent at corner that can match up with the NFL talent that Ohio State has receivers. And there aren't many other teams in the country that have that. And the times that Ohio State's offense has struggled is when they've run into the teams that have that. So it's difficult for me to think that the Buckeyes are going to beat Georgia here unless Georgia turns the ball over multiple times and the Ohio State defense balls out. You know, I, I I go through this and I'm not really sure what good passing games aside from Tennessee that Georgia's really faced. I, I, I'm i not disagreeing with Tom that Georgia's the talented team on defense. I, I think they are probably the best defense in the country. But at the same time, there is an element here with just college football defense in general. Either you have faced elite passing attacks or, or really good quarterbacks and, and seeing what you can do against them or you haven't, right? And we see some teams that get lit up when they play decent quarterbacks and feast on bad ones. And in the SEC East this year, there was a lot of poor quarterback play, mm-hmm. right? Will, Will Levis did not play well. Brady Cook at, or at Missouri is not a good quarterback. Spencer Rattler has two good games, two average and about four bad ones, right? Uh, Hooker obviously played well most of the year, so that is a feather in their cap. Richardson was wildly up and down. They got about two quarters of bad AR and about 20 minutes of, of good AR. Uh, who, who did Georgia play from the West? Will Rogers, who was kind of disappointing this year, relative to expectations. And, and Auburn, obviously, no which doesn't, game. really doesn't believe in passing. So, you know, we'll see how, how good these Georgia corners are. And can Georgia generate pressure without having to blitz too much? I don't know. I, I don't know that Georgia has great pass rushers off the edge. And I do think Ohio State has some decent pass protecting tackles there. So I, I'm excited to watch that matchup from that perspective. They may they might be able to make Georgia play out of its comfort zone defensively better than Tennessee did. Well, it's the, the, the counter to that though is how many elite passing attacks has Georgia faced? How many elite passing attacks exist? Like Tennessee, I think is one of what we saw all year was one of the elite passing attacks from a scheme standpoint. Maybe not talent wise, but they were tearing everybody apart. Georgia only had a week to prepare for that game and completely shut it down. Georgia's got a month to prepare 
for what Ohio State does and what it, you, you know what's trying to do. And we've seen Ohio State. What's happened to Ohio State when it's gone against elite defenses? The mm-hmm. offense doesn't work as well, and we've seen multiple examples of that. So it's gonna be it's gonna come down to who wins those battles. If, like you said, if Georgia gets pressure, Ohio State's in a lot of trouble. If Ohio State gets pressure and can force turnovers and get Georgia offense off the field or get them in a situation kind of like we talked about ahead of yesterday's game, where you have to put things on Stetson Bennett's shoulders then Ohio State can win that game. It's it's weird to say in a game that has that much talent on the outside that this is all going to come down to the trenches, but it is. Oh, no, that's right out of Football 101. <laughs> yeah, that's. I'm just going to actually copy and paste that for all the radio hits over the next month. Well, you know, it comes down to the trenches and uh, winning the turnover battle. They're cliches for a reason, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, do, all right, Jackson Smith and Jigba, you think he comes back? No, no. Are, are, is that being reported somewhere? No, no, no. I, I just think that the Ohio State fan right now is thinking, hey, if JSN comes back, the math changes. And that would be a difference maker that is worth reconsidering Ohio State's chances to be able to score touchdowns and overwhelm the Georgia secondary with the talent on the outside. I mean, I, I think that Marvin Harrison Jr. is the best wide receiver in college football this season. And now all of a sudden, if you add somebody with the ceiling of Jackson Smith and Jigba, the math changes. But what's what's the thought process if you're an Ohio State fan, if you're Johnny Buckeye, and you're convincing yourself that JSN might come back for this game? Your thought process is JSN's going to come back because it's a big game. Was the Michigan game a big game? Because he didn't play in that one. And maybe you're thinking another month of time off will be what he needs to heal. He's had three months to heal. Just maybe... I, Maybe start asking yourself the possibility that it's not just the hamstring that's keeping him off the field. Can 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 we at least uh, entertain the idea that if you were Ohio State, you'd put out the smoke that he's playing? Oh, I would, and I would, like, I would like be trying if, to get him to play. If, I mean, if that's you'll, yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. But like, <laughs> even if you have received word behind the scenes, or at least the notion behind the scenes uh, that he is not going to play, you at least have to put it out there to make Georgia think about it, right? It's a different offense with him in. Like, mm-hmm. I love Marvin Harrison Jr., right? And Marvin Harrison Jr. is a good athlete. He's a great body control guy. He's a technician, and he also has great hands. He is not a burner, right? Smith the Jigba does give them a different speed element that they have lacked right now. And, and it's hard to say they've lacked. I mean, they're probably the best offense in the country. But they are different with him, you know? So we will we'll see. Like, if he's decided he's going to play, that's that does change the game. Yes. Yeah. Georgia should not be a seven point favorite if Smith Jacob plays. 